Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another Alex on Tech and ITY TV interview. I'm joined today by Matthew Tamanello, who joins us again. Uh, he's the ANZ Product Marketing Manager at Dynabook. Welcome back to the program. Thanks, Alex. Great to be back. Thank you. Now, we spoke a couple of months ago and learned that Dynabook is the new Toshiba, now owned by Sharp, which is owned by Foxconn. And the Dynabook is not only the name of uh, Alan Kay's seminal computing device from, I think, the 60s, but the name that Toshiba used for its models in Japan for years. Now, one of the legendary products that uh, uh, Toshiba's had is the Satellite Pro range. I just remember when there was just a satellite, but the Satellite Pro range is the one that has survived. And so mm -hmm. what is the heritage of this range and what are the two new models? Uh, look, so the heritage of the rain, I mean, that, that as a brand has been around for a long time now. Um, I think it's well over 20 years as a Satellite Pro. I, I think mm. it was one of the first products I had when I started with the company way back in, oh, showing my age here, uh, 1993. Uh, so, yeah, that was one of the first ones I had. Um, this new reiteration, though, that, that, that range has always been associated with great value. Mm -hmm. um, good, robust Toshiba product, now Dynabook product, uh, but great value. And this newest range forms part of our C series. So we have a C40 and C50, which signifies a 14 and a 15 inch screen in these ranges. So um, yeah, we're really happy to have these ranges in um, and, and we've just reintroduced them um, with 11th gen uh, chipsets from Intel. So yeah, really happy with that. Well, I can see that there are a range of ports and connectivity options on both models. So can you please tell us about the, the specs? Yeah, sure. Um, so the range, look, it, it's quite a varied range. It basically runs from sort of i3, uh, 4 gig, 128, um, right through to probably the mainstream, you know, specifications of sort of i5, 8 gig, um, 256 gig SSD, which is fantastic, but right up to i7, 32 gig with 512 terabytes. So, uh, sorry, 512 gig. Um, so, that, you know, which is sort of huge and, and really would cater for anyone. Um, as far as the ports go, I, I really like this range. It, it's been refreshed. Um, it's very, very competitive in what it offers. It's got USB-C, USB-A, fast charging ports, which is fantastic. And the thing that I like um, is it's kept the Ethernet port. Um, and I think that's a really important one. I think sort of that has come off some of the smaller machines, um, some of the lightweight ones. And the other thing I love is the full-size HDMI, so no dongles, because we always forget dongles in this industry right when you need it. So they're, they're, they're some of the great specifications. Um, other little pet ones that I like, um, we haven't gone for any of the high def. It's all full high def, so 1080p screens, because we all know that these devices have gone from just being a workpiece to being very much, you know, enabled in both personal and, and work life. So mm. I think from that point of view, making an all-rounder like this, you know, really continues that Satellite Pro brand, which is great value for money and a very robust brand and product. So, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a really good range. Sure. And there's micro SD slots as well. Yeah, for the, yeah, you're onto it. Uh, there is a micro SD slot. So, um, you know, I, look, I actually personally use micro SD as, as a third form of backup. I've, I've got the cloud and I still actually store stuff locally, um, but I actually keep all my important stuff as well on that little SD card there. Um, obviously, though, if you, you know, we have a few uh, keen photographers at work, um, one, one that's sort of semi-professional actually. Um, so he loves the fact that it's got that as well. Yeah, and I noticed there's an optional fingerprint reader. Yeah, optional fingerprint reader. We we're just talking about that before. Um, so it's, it's only it's a relatively inexpensive one. Um, if you wanted us to build you with that that feature uh, involved, obviously security is a big thing these days. Uh, so I think it's only about an extra thirty thirty five dollars. So uh, well, well worth the money. Yeah, and also the um, RAM and, and SSD are they user upgradable or is it soldered? Um, so look, you can you can upgrade some of them. Um, you certainly can upgrade them. Um, we like to always recommend that it's done uh, by an authorised service agent um, just because they're, you know, anti-static environments. Um, you know, the last thing we'd hate to do is wreck a, a, an investment by, you know, sort of having someone, you know, put something in Zap and it. maybe not put it in exactly the right way. So yeah. it's always best to, to let an expert do it at a very really small cost. Sure. And But does the back of the unit come off and it's right there or do you have to remove the keyboard what's the short no you, you have to you have to have to pull it apart so you yeah. know you do have to pull it apart with uh screws and case covers and things so it, it's not as simple as it perhaps used to be it used but to be, yeah, that yeah. said 
Um, I think, you know, the benefit of that is you're getting much slimmer devices and a lot more real estate. And more security. I mean, before you could just unscrew something, pull the disc out and walk off if you wanted to. Not much harder yeah. to do that when you've, got to, when you've got to do it. Now, with the 4 gig and 128 gig version, I mean, it's we're getting to the stage where that's no longer, you know, really good enough for people want 8 and 256. So who is the 4 gig and 128 gig um, for? Is that for people who are connecting to virtual machines or basic education? What's the... Um, yeah, look, look, look. It's it's hard to categorise because people use these devices in so many different ways. But if I was mm. to generalise, um, I'd say probably that that sort of entry level computing, you know, an i three four gig, one twenty eight, it's, it's a good spec. It'll do the job. Mm. Um, certainly, the mainstay for for small business um, or or any sort of you know computing power requirements is an i five eight gig two fifty six. But yeah. this range will go up to an i seven thirty two gig five twelve. So you know, it, it does cater for everyone in terms of that specification range yeah. um, and it really just comes down to what you're doing but you know a, a rule of thumb I would suggest that you know an i5 8 gig 256 gig is a starting point and that's certainly reflective in not just this region but in in the global figures yeah I mean I know that uh, some people who work in defense for example they have to log into a different system so it all happens somewhere else so it doesn't really matter what sort of machine you've got because the processing is it's all done you know through the cloud <laughs> yeah yeah exactly exactly so yeah it just it really does depend now there's a feature that i've seen on various smartphone cases and screen protectors mm -hmm. uh, which uh, smartphone makers still aren't including as standard on their devices despite my questioning about it and <laughs> the uh, what the, you know the obvious of the utility of such a thing is that this is an antimicrobial coating as standard. Now, this is something that you've put onto the Satellite Pro. Um, yeah. And uh, tell us about that. And is it something you'll extend to the entire range as it's all refreshed? Yeah, so it's an interesting one because, uh, you know, normally the latest and greatest stuff comes out on our X-Series range, which is sort of, you know, our top 10 premium range. Mm. Um, in, in this instance, though, this was our obviously reaction to the world environment that was going on. Um, and, and the first range that we had to release straight after this was the Satellite Pros. So we went, you know what, let's, let's put it on there. We have to mm. put it on. Since then, uh, we have it included on our new Tekra range as well. Um, and there is obviously going to expand across our ranges as we go. Yeah. And uh, what's the lifespan of the coating? You know, does it eventually wear off or is it effectively permanent? And, you know, what does it actually do? The small print says that it doesn't protect users or others against bacteria or other disease organism, but it helps mm. to inhibit the growth of bacteria, which makes it antibacterial. Uh, and it's something that, uh, mm. that I don't think I've heard any of your competitors do. Yeah, it's an interesting one. So, I mean, basically, it's like a there's, there's no grooves or, or indentations where the bacteria can sit. So, mm -hmm. basically, it just wipes off very cleanly. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, that, that's the purpose of it. I, mean, I know at home, uh, you know, with my kids, certainly, um, you know, we have multiple people using the same machine. So, it's nice just to be able to wipe it down and, and know that there's some sort of safety in and around that. Um, in terms of it wearing off, look, I've had machines for over 10 years and not had the paint wear off. I don't expect this would be any different. I expect that we could have this conversation in 10 years and we'll say, yeah, look, at the paint's still really good. So um, it, it is really good quality paint that we did a lot of testing in the background. Um, it is actually under a Japanese standard um, and they recognise that standard there as well. So it's not recognised locally at this point, but I'm sure it'll come. Yeah. And I also noticed you have a larger click pad, uh, larger than last year's yeah. model. Yeah, but one thing I noticed was that the antibacterial coating isn't on the click pad. So why could, do you know why they couldn't put it on that? I mean, that probably gets touched a lot more than the rest of the machine as well. Yeah, true. So look, um, in terms of the coating itself, you know, it's, it's, it's a fantastic coating. We can't put it on the click pad just because it detens desensitizes the click pad. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't, makes it a bit clunky. I mean, the whole purpose yeah. of having that bigger click pad, which you've noticed, is to make it really user-friendly. Um, and, and we've had a lot of great feedback in and around that. So um, it just doesn't make sense for us sure. to, to put it on there, unfortunately. Well, there's always wipes that you can use to clean it if you're yeah, <laughs> really exactly, paranoid about exactly. it. Yeah. Exactly. Now, uh, <clears throat> Windows 11 is obviously an option. Now it's coming preloaded mm -hmm. with Windows 11, both new models. But are enterprise yep. customers getting them with Windows 11 yet, or are they still, as you'd expect, opting for Windows 10? Um, yeah, look, it really depends on the size of an organization, you know, like I, I think in the, in the smaller, more nimble organizations or for students, it's very easy to, to adopt the latest uh, operating mm. system and, and it is a good operating system. I'm sure you've had to play with it. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's great. So, 
Um, for bigger organizations, there's a lot more involved. So generally, they will take a little longer to adopt it because they're, they're only just seeing it for the first time sort of now anyway. Mm, mm. It's only been out for, what, a, a month and a months, bit? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So uh, that, they'll take a little time to work out what applications do and work with it, what needs to be changed. And obviously on these big fleets, you can't just sort of click your fingers and change yeah. a thousand units yeah. overnight. So um, it really depends on you know how big the business is and, and who the user at this point. But I have no doubt over time, everyone will sort of move to it because it is good. Sure. Now, one of the good things about the 11th generation Intel processors is the extended battery life. So what is the mm -hmm. claim battery life and how close is that... Uh, um, you know, come to reality. <laughs> yeah, well, actually, I, I just, was having this conversation earlier today, and and the reality is, um, this 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 is a more robust test that we're doing on the battery life. So, um, for those that know Mobile Mark or the old Jada testing, you know, we could run a Jada testing on this product. Um, but at that time, there weren't things like Wi-Fi, right? So um, it just or, it wouldn't be a real or, world wouldn't be a real world scenario. That's right. And there, there, there weren't fifty tabs open in battery sucking Chrome either at that time. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly right. So um, you know the battery life quotes are around that eight to nine hour mark, mm -hmm. uh, but they're pretty accurate. So they are real world tests. So um, I'd be very confident in sitting here and saying, you know, hand on heart, you, you know, you shouldn't see much variance from those sorts of hours that are quoted. Um, and it, it is more stringent testing, and I'd rather see something that's more real, real world that gives the user uh, the expectation that we're, we're giving them. So um, I'm all for making those tests as robust as possible and not using yeah. something that someone will get deflated by when there's a huge variance. So, um, eight, but eight to nine hours, I mean, that, that, that's pretty solid working. And that's a working day. Look, it used to be the case you would take whatever the manufacturer said and you'd halve it. So if we're, if we're now <laughs> yeah, getting yeah. much closer to uh, what the manufacturer claims, that is a great thing. And it's something that we've seen over the past couple of years as these newer Intel processors and also the battery chemistries must have improved and Windows 11 and Windows yeah. 10 have been trying to make efforts at you know being less energy intensive. So that's a good thing. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. What sort of pricing are we looking at both? models starting from obviously it goes up depending on what yep. um uh you know configurations you buy and are there any special you know models for australia or is there some options that we don't get here etc um look at, the, at this stage you know our, our entry point is really around that i58 gig 256 because that's that's the sort of bread and butter starting mm -hmm. point um the the i3 4 gig 128 it's it's around that uh what is it uh, in, in australian dollars and i'll use rrps because mm -hmm. that's the most relevant but um it's about a, a thousand and twenty one dollars i think and that's x or including gst uh, that's including yeah yep. so, so for so, businesses that'd be under a grand yeah yeah um yep. you know the the uh the i5 range um it, it's just a little bit more it's probably about uh about around about 1400 mm -hmm. depending on which which variant you and take that's, so that's, that's for the 14 that. inch model uh yeah well there's not much actually difference between the 14 and 15 inch to be honest so yeah. the 15 inch uh would be what that uh 1430 Mm -hmm. um, and the 14 inches, because it's a little bit smaller, there's a little bit um, uh, differences just in the way we have to do things in a smaller chassis. Um, so it, there's about a, a $50 premium on a 14 inch for the yeah. same specification. So yeah, the, the smaller one is go, more expensive. <laughs> but that's, yeah, well, that's the way. Yeah, it absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, well, and, it, go on. Oh, no, I was just going to say, you know, that, that's a big thing for us, you know, when we've always done world, we've been doing well first for 36 years, right? So that could be anything from a new technology like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth or LTE. Um, but often when we create these feats, it's not just the weight, right? There's always been some serious engineering miniaturization that's gone on in the background. So that's just par for the course. Yeah. And uh you know, where do people buy these new models? And presumably if people are buying uh, in large volumes for fleets, there'll be some sort of volume discounts. Uh, there's always volume discounts available, yep, for sure, um, on any of those bigger fleets. Um, in terms of availability, you know, our, our distributors here in this country, they service something like 3,500 uh, retailers, um, you know, from all over the country. So uh, it's certainly out there in a lot of, you know, if, if, if it's not in your local computer store, it'll be one in nearby. So... There's, there's, like I said, there's about three and a half thousand of them, so you should be able to find one fairly easily. Sure, sure. And what has demand been like in the in the past month or so that it's been available? Um, well, actually, I'll, I'll take a step back. So we, we introduced that satellite pro range um, almost a year ago to the day, mm -hmm. um, and we hadn't had that branding for a little while. I'm, ha I'm happy to report that 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 in terms of market share for us, in terms of what we sell, it now represents 18% of our business. Mm -hmm. And that so was for the been... previous model with the 10th gen processor. 
Yeah, oh, that's for the 10th gen processor, right? So um, it, it's gone from nothing to 18% really quickly, which is mm. probably a really significant uh, sign that, that that brand is well accepted. People know it's great value for money. So, mm. um, and that, that actually gives us more reason to expand it into next year. But uh, the sales, sales have been good. Sales, the sales have been really, really good. So we're happy with that. Yeah. And any word on when you might go back into OfficeWorks and Harvey Norman and JB, or is that still being negotiated? Because presumably they want cuts, <laughs> cuts that uh, selling direct doesn't um, have to you know, deal with. Yeah, look, uh, look. I think what happened will happen over time is is they'll obviously want a piece of the cake. So yeah. I, we, we've started talks with numbers of them already. Um, nothing's come to fruition at this point, sure, but um, sure. it'll be an ongoing conversation, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> uh, particularly, particularly as our volumes and our and our range uh, varieties it grows. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, Toshiba was a pioneer in so many ways, as you alluded before. I mean, with many, mm-hmm. many well first, small as this, and first DVDs, and so many things. But uh, are there any hints? Uh, because I know you. Can't give too much away about what Dynabooks R and D Labs might have in store for us in 2022 and beyond. Yeah, well, as the Australian New Zealand Product Marketing Manager, obviously we have weekly calls on this, so um, we have pretty much set out our range for 2022. Um, I'm happy to report there will probably be a world first within that. Okay, um, can't tell you what it is. <laughs> um, I'm also happy to tell you there'll be some new materials being used, mm-hmm. um, and we haven't seen in our ranges before. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. Um, I'm also happy to sort of suggest to you that you will see a great broadening of our ranges. Okay. Um, so mm-hmm. there's going to be a lot more variety with what we do, um, and there's some new chassis as well. So uh, yeah, it, it'll be a busy year for us. I was actually comparing this year to to next year and uh it's significantly more we're going to see a more dynamic diner book yeah absolutely (laughs) might have to use that (laughs) go for it yeah yeah now will diner book be at ces and are there any pre-ces announcements that you can hint at Mm. because again you know you want to save the announcements for ces but maybe it's something you can let us know yeah yeah, so I, I did get an email this week about an embargo mm-hmm. uh, for around CES. So yeah. I'll, I'll just say the answer to that question is yes. Yeah, okay, good, good. <laughs> now, uh, I know that the, the Toshiba brand is still strong at major retailers. You might not have your laptops there, but you certainly do have things like the uh, SSDs. I purchased yep. this you know, upwards of a year ago. It's a one terabyte drive at the time. It was about $150 Australian thereabouts. I think they've gone up a little bit because the dollar's dropped. The only thing I'd change on this, besides besides asking you to make an 8 gig model for, you know, 8 terabyte model for $150, okay. bucks, yeah. which won't happen yet, is, um, is to put USB-C. Uh, so, um, yep. you know, I mean, tell us a bit about the accessories that you've got, uh, which are keenly priced. Yeah, yeah. Look, that's still a very good portion of our business, to be honest. Um, we're still selling those in some of the major retailers as well. So um, you'll see that around. Uh, there are bigger uh, storage capacities now. You'll be happy to know. I'm, I'm not think I don't think we're quite at eight gig, but I'm sure we'll get eight there. terabytes. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I remember when one terabyte three four years ago was a thousand dollars, right? Now you yeah. can buy um, like a, I think a Samsung internal two and a half inch SSD for about eight hundred and something if you look at msy.com.au, mm-hmm. who are always competitive. So I mean, in a couple of years, these things will be ten terabytes for. Hopefully, a couple of hundred bucks. You know, I mean, it's, things are moving so fast, but it takes you know a couple of years is still seven hundred and sixty more, you know, thirty days away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I mean, and there's lots of good accessories going on. I can see there's an accessory in the background there. Tell us about that one. Uh, yeah, this is an accessory that we've got at the moment. It's actually on part of our promotion, so I'll explain about that in a sec. But first of all, you can see here it's a great foreign uh, one home office bundle. Mm-hmm. Um, you've got uh, keyboard. Uh, and a mouse that's a Wi-Fi. I'm using the headset, as you can see, Mm -hmm. Um, and it's actually got a great camera in there as well. So um, it's it's really got a lot of traction. We're actually giving that away right now on our 10th gen Satellite Pro C40s and C50s. So um, great because there's two reasons that's great. One is it's retail value is about Mm -hmm. $170-odd dollars. Um, and the second reason is there's stock in the country. Now, stock in the country is a hard one at the moment. So there's, a, there's, there's well over a 1,000 units uh, sitting there. And I know uh, I've had to go out and actually get my uh, kids' requirement for next year now because I know if I tried to do it early in the year, ready for February when they start, I probably won't get one. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy to be offering that on all the Satellite Pro C40 and C50, the 10th gen variants at the moment. So to clear out that stock. And what are what is the entry level models uh, for the fourteen or fifteen inch starting at in the tenth gen? In case people are interested, 
Uh, yeah, so in the, the i5, 8 gig, 256, yep. So they're, they're around 1350. Um, you should see them in the stores um, and around 1400 for the 14 inch variant as well. So, you know, a great, great value. And, you know, you're getting this as well. So and it's fantastic, to be honest. Um, everyone keeps stealing mine around here. So I've got to keep an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we end, is there anything else about uh, Dynabook that's happened in the last, you know, year that we should know about, both locally and internationally? Yeah, look, as I said, you know, I've, I've been on these weekly meetings for the product marketing team, and I can tell you there's a real buzz in the company right now. Um, as I was explaining, we're going to be introducing some really cool things next year, new materials in our ranges, a much wider range. It's going to be another world first. Um, and there's a real buzz in our company. So, I, you know, we just had an, uh, the quarter we just finished uh, was our biggest quarter we've had in over four years. So um, th things are humming along quite nicely, and you should expect to see a lot from us. In 2022. So, what message would you like to leave ITYR TV viewers and readers with, uh, and you know, and your customers and future partners? Oh, look, I just want to say thanks for your support over all these years, to be honest. And, and I'm just proud that we're going to be supporting you in the future um, with the same things you've come to know from us over the last 36 years. So, keep an eye out. There'll be lots of things you want to be trying in the next year or so. That's for sure. Well, Matthew Tamanello, the Dynamic Dynamo at Dynabook, the <laughs> ANZ Product Marketing Manager. Thank you very much for your time. It's great to talk to you again. And I, I hope we do talk again in the future. Kind words, and I'm sure we will. I really enjoy these conversations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye.